Hello and welcome to another history class with Ado Libertam Job. In this class, we shall be discussing the Commonwealth, OAU, AU, ECOWAS, OPEC, and UNO. Part one is the Commonwealth in the theme, history, and global issues. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain how the Commonwealth meets the foreign policy objectives of Nigeria, examine the aims and objectives of the Commonwealth, discuss the failures and problems of the Commonwealth, and lastly, state the achievements of the Commonwealth. Now let's begin by looking at some of the things that is common to virtually everybody. In the school or at home or in the church or wherever we find ourselves, we do have friends. We make friends as a result of certain things that we find in those people. Also, we also join some organizations or groups as a result of certain things or interests which is of benefit to us. And whenever we discover that these things are no longer there, we withdraw ourselves. The same thing happened to different countries. Different countries join different organizations because of one reason or the other. In this process, there is a guideline that directs the activities of these countries in their relationship with other countries. This guideline is referred to as foreign policy. Every country has a foreign policy. Nigeria also has a foreign policy. And Nigerian foreign policy is directed at Africa. This means that Africa is the centerpiece of Nigerian foreign policy. Nigeria's foreign policy is aimed at maintaining unity in Africa, as well as the granting of independence to various African nations. This means that Nigeria has as its primary aim the decolonization of the continent. This includes, of course, the elimination of apartheid in South Africa, although it has ended. But these were what guide Nigeria's foreign policy after independence. To achieve these foreign policy objectives, Nigeria decided to join several international organizations, including the Commonwealth, the Organization of African Unity, now African Union, the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, the United Nations Organization, UNO, and the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. There are several other ones that Nigeria is also a member to, but in this lesson, we shall concentrate on the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth was known as the British Commonwealth or the Commonwealth of Nations, but is commonly called the Commonwealth. As you can see in the picture on the screen, this is a map of Commonwealth countries. They are indicated in green. Now let's look at the meaning of the Commonwealth of Nations. The Commonwealth of Nations is an association of countries that were former British colonies or that formerly belonged to the British Empire, as well as some other countries that had no historical ties with the British Empire. Initially, it was composed of Britain and her dominions. By dominions, I mean those countries that were colonized by Britain but were later granted self-independence. These include Canada, Australia, and Ireland, as well as South Africa. These were known as dominions because they achieved self-independence, not actual independence. Let's talk about the formation of the Commonwealth of Nations. The Commonwealth of Nations was officially formed in the year 1931 through the Act of Westminster. This was an Act of Parliament of the United Kingdom that was passed into law. And by this law, the self-governing dominions of the British Empire were granted legislative independence. And what do we mean by legislative independence? They were able to make laws for their territory. These self-governing dominions were Canada, South Africa, and Ireland. However, some other dominions like Australia, New Zealand, and Newfoundland needed to ratify the act, that is to accept it before it can be applied to them. This act of 1931 was the act that formally established or created the Commonwealth of Nations. Today, it is now known as the Commonwealth. Now, let's look at the aims and objectives of the Commonwealth of Nations. When it was formally established, the Commonwealth had no constitution or charter. 
as it is the case with several other organizations. It was not until 2013 that the Commonwealth came up with a charter. According to the 2013 Charter of the Commonwealth of Nations, the organization was created with the following objectives. To promote world peace, to promote representative democracy and development, to oppose racism and fight against poverty, ignorance and disease, as well as to stop gender discrimination. These were the various objectives of the Commonwealth. Having considered the aims and objectives of the organization, now let's look at the organization structure, or what is known as the organs of the organization. The Commonwealth has some principal organs, which include the head of the Commonwealth, the heads of government, and the secretariat. These are the three basic organs of the Commonwealth. The head of the Commonwealth is the British monarch, or the Queen of England, who is presently Queen Elizabeth II. You can see her picture on the screen. The second organ is the head of government meeting. Before this time, this was known as the meetings of the Commonwealth Prime Ministers. Some of the duties or functions performed by these heads of government meeting include approval of budgets, appointment of the Secretary General, and giving sanctions to member states. This body normally meet annually to discuss on issues affecting the Commonwealth. From these issues, solutions are also provided. Now let's talk about the Secretariat. The Secretariat is the third principal organ of the Commonwealth. This organ was created in the year 1965 in Kingston, Jamaica. It is headed by the Secretary General of the organization and the first Secretary General of the Commonwealth was Arnold Smith from Canada. Some functions performed by the Secretariat include organization of annual conferences of heads of states and governments, preparation of reports, as well as administrative and correspondence reports. As you can see, the image on the screen there is showing you the Secretariat. That is the Secretariat of the organization and it is located in London. Having a look at the principal organs of the organization, let's look at some problems facing the Commonwealth as an organization. The Commonwealth of Nations has made tremendous achievement in several areas. However, it is still facing some problems too. Some of the problems facing the Commonwealth of Nations include differences in foreign policies by member states. What do we mean by differences in foreign policy? We are looking at the guideline that is regulating or controlling or directing the affairs of member states towards other countries. These foreign policies are different. They have different objectives. They have different aims. They have different targets, different aspirations. And so it is difficult for the Commonwealth of Nations as an organization to achieve some of its aims and objectives because of these differences in foreign policies of member states. Let's look at diversity of culture among member states. Member states are not from one continent, and so they have diversity or differences in culture. For instance, let's talk about language. Some of these countries speak their indigenous languages, and so it has been difficult for them to actually communicate well using the general languages. Let's look at another problem, which is the presence of regional and sub-regional organizations. These countries or member states also belong to other organizations within their continent or sub-regions. For instance, let's take Nigeria. Nigeria is a member of the African Union. Nigeria is also a member of the Economic Community of West African States. And so, being a member to other unions is affecting Nigerians' participation in the Commonwealth of Nations. That is what we are saying. Let's look at the absence of a charter until the year 2013. The Commonwealth of Nations before this time had no charter or constitution. It was not until 2013 that a charter was prepared by the organization. And so it has been difficult for the organization to compare compliance to its decision on member states. Member states were doing whatever they like because there was no constitution. There was no constitution to compare member states to obey the decisions of the organization. But by this charter, every member state is now compelled to work in accordance with the charter or forget about being a member of the union. 
Another problem that has been facing the Commonwealth of Nations is political instability among member states. This one was very frequent in the 1960s when there were military takeovers in several African countries. Political instability simply means change of government. And so when there is frequent change of government, it is difficult for Commonwealth to pursue their policies and objectives. Because when a new regime comes in, they normally have changes in policies. So this has been affecting the organization as well. The last problem of the Commonwealth is no common currency. By no common currency, we mean the body is expected or was expected to have a common currency for member states, just like the common language is English language. They were supposed to have a common currency so that they can actually integrate. They can buy things together, do things together, and it will have made the organization to grow faster and faster. Despite these problems, the Commonwealth has also made several achievements. So now let's consider the achievements of the Commonwealth of Nations. The Commonwealth has made several achievements in several areas. Some of them are promotion of education through scholarship. The Commonwealth has offered scholarship to students from member states to study in various universities in different countries in the world. Another achievement of the Commonwealth is promotion of sports activities. This has been achieved through the Commonwealth Games. As you can see the image on the screen showing an athlete who is participating in the Commonwealth Games. The Commonwealth Games has brought different member states together and these games is organized from time to time and member countries participate in the activities. So this is an achievement of the Commonwealth. Another achievement of the Commonwealth is promotion of literature. The Commonwealth has promoted literature or literary writing through the Commonwealth Writers' Prize. This Commonwealth Writers' Prize has been won by different individuals from different member states. It is aimed at promoting literary writing. Another achievement of the Commonwealth of Nations is the provision of military training to member states. The Commonwealth of Nations has provided this opportunity to member states to train their military men in institutions in Britain or Canada. These institutions serve as a training ground because they are well equipped. For instance, one of such institutions is in England. It is called Sandhurst. Many Nigerian military officers were also trained from this institution. And after their training, they have come back to Nigeria as officers of the military. Now let's consider some failures of the Commonwealth. Apart from the numerous achievements which we have noticed that was recorded by the Commonwealth of Nations, they also experienced some failures. And one area in which the Commonwealth has failed is to take actions against violations of human rights and discrimination. Member states of the Commonwealth of Nations at various times have violated human rights and have discriminated against people living in the same territory or country. This happened in South Africa before now, in the era that was referred to as apartheid regime. Apartheid in South Africa was a segregation or discrimination against the blacks by the whites. Apartheid was practiced in South Africa and was condemned by various organizations and countries in the world. However, Commonwealth was not able to take an effective action against South Africa during this apartheid regime. Furthermore, in 2009, there was a call on the Commonwealth to suspend Sri Lanka as a result of atrocities committed by government forces against civilians, especially the Tamil civilian in the 2009 civil war that rocked that country. The Commonwealth did not take any action against Sri Lanka as it was in South Africa. And so one area that the Commonwealth has failed is mainly to take action against human rights violation and discrimination. This happened in South Africa, it has happened in Sri Lanka, it has also happened in several other countries. And so it is a failure on the part of the Commonwealth of Nations. We have looked at the failures of the Commonwealth. Now let's consider how Commonwealth meets the foreign policy objective of Nigeria. That is talking about the Commonwealth and Nigeria foreign policy. Nigeria and many African countries joined the Commonwealth in order to realize their foreign policy objectives. Politically, Nigerian foreign policy included the liberation of Africa from colonialism and discrimination 
as well as bringing unity to Africa. Nigeria has achieved this objective by being a member of the Commonwealth of Nations because the Commonwealth condemned colonialism and helped to put an end to colonialism in Africa. Economically, Nigeria's desire to develop and improve our economy was also achieved by being a member of the Commonwealth. This is because through the Commonwealth, Nigeria was given the opportunity to trade with other member nations and also to receive technical assistance. Thus, this organization has given Nigeria the opportunity to develop her economy and grow to become a giant in Africa. We've now come to the end of this lesson, but let's take a quick look at what we have done so far. We learned that the Commonwealth is an association of Britain and our former territories, as well as other territories that have no history or ties with Britain. Also, we learned that the Commonwealth was established in 1931 through the Statute of Westminster. Moving on, we learned that some of the aims of the Commonwealth are to promote war, peace, and representative democracy. Furthermore, we also learned that the organs of the Commonwealth are the head of the Commonwealth, the heads of government, and the secretariat. Also, we learned that some problems of the organization are differences in foreign policies, diversity in culture, and lack of a common currency. Also, some achievements of the organization include promotion of education through scholarship and promotion of sports and games. Moving forward, we discussed that the Commonwealth has failed to take actions against human rights violations and discrimination by member states. Lastly, we learned that the Commonwealth meets Nigerian foreign policy objective by condemning colonial rule in Africa and apartheid in South Africa, which was in line with Nigeria's foreign policy. Now let's take some questions to test our knowledge on what we have learned so far. Question 1. How did the Commonwealth of Nations meet Nigeria's foreign policy objective? A. Encouraging sports and games. B. Condemning of colonialism. Or C. Having common currency. The correct answer is B. Condemning of colonialism. Question 2. Which of the following was not an achievement of the Commonwealth of Nations? A. Sports and games. B. Education scholarship or C. Common currency. The correct answer is C. Common currency. This has not been achieved by the Commonwealth. I hope you can now explain how the Commonwealth meets Nigeria foreign policy objectives and examine the aims and objectives of the Commonwealth. Thank you and bye for now.